What is up everybody, Scape211 here, and we are doing another best loadouts video. I know it's been a long time since I've done one of these. A lot of people have been asking for them, and I wanna do one that covers a lot of ground. This one, we're gonna focus on your best competitive free-to-play hanger. All right, now this is probably exciting for a lot of you because you wanna have those goals for end game, especially if you're not one that spends money. But obviously, we're gonna be limited in what we can do with this kind of a hanger because we're not gonna have access to all those goodies that the paying players get. So with that in mind, our limitations are going to be the progress path now this is obviously you know our main limitation for our mechs and our weapons they can only come from this for sure um, for the pilots only those that you can buy in game with in-game currency right so we won't be able to get some of those other legendary ones quite yet um, by doing this but we can still get a lot of great ones and then when we go to our implants we want to focus on just those that we know we will get in the shop when it cycles now obviously you have to wait until it actually cycles in the shop and you have to have the currency but they are ones that we can bank on getting for sure now obviously if your luck is good if you get some great implants based on your free ones or some other implants some other way or if there's some kind of event that happens a derby um, a battle pass that's cheap that you want to buy some a coin event crate rush that you can get awesome weapons or mechs or anything for absolutely add that to your arsenal but if you're someone that just came into the game or you missed certain items over time um, because you weren't able to spend or you just weren't able to play at a certain time you want to have stuff you can bank on and those are the things i want to focus on obviously some of us are waiting around for some of those big guns disc launcher 16 i'm looking at you been in the game for like five months and we still haven't had any opportunity to even get it with in-game currency so free to player free to play players are kind of stuck in the lurch on that one but with that kind of stuff in mind i still think you can build a pretty competitive end game hanger if you got the chops and you got the time to put into this so with all that kind of stuff in mind let's get into it all right first up we gotta have kill shot this is kill shot with the dual carbine 12s and major now this kind of build is maybe slightly controversial just because even though, yeah, you're gonna have kill shot, not many people put the carbine 12s on them, but you are gonna have to have them in your hangar based on our limitations. And I'll explain why I put them on kill shot. For most instances, when you're talking about like CPC um, or 2v2 or, or various type of stuff, just general play, Kill shot is usually an opener, a beacon runner, one that you're using as an assassin to deal with certain mechs. It's not really a guy that has a ton of a body to really last you through the whole match. And you're gonna usually use them for a specific purpose. And with that kind of stuff in thought, I think it's a little dangerous to put something like Disc Launcher 12s on it, where you could lose your uh, kill shot and Disc Launcher 12s early. Um, so to me, it's more of like a playing smart thing. If I know I'm not gonna keep my kill shot forever, I'm gonna be using the carbines on it uh, in that way major will also give him a little bit of boosted survivability which is nice and because of his ability to move around as well as do some damage with his melee dash he won't have to rely solely on the dps of the carbine 12s which can be quite slow compared to a lot of other meta based weaponry so i use that for a main choice other alternates, of course, would be Disc Launcher 12 if you have a certain type of setup that you want to do. That one's not bad. And another really common other option would be the Rocket Mortar 12s. Uh, I don't love that in the sense of being a beacon runner, but it's great for like TDM and certain maps and setups. In terms of his overall layout for the implants, I definitely think that the uh, Legendary Reload and the Epic Mag are really handy to have. I don't think they're absolutely required to make this weapon shine, but they are good ones to get and you get them in the shop. Then you obviously have your basic weapon damage one, which is good to get, just your highest one available there. And same thing for your ability damage. I did damage just because of the dash on here to make that work. So that would be what I use for the kill shot loadout. Next up, we have Panther with the dual rail guns and Maverick. Dual rail guns, even though it's kind of taken a slight backseat to the new EM rifles, is still in a lot of hangers and seen a lot in Endgame. Heck, even if you're using the EM rifles, you may still use the rail guns. The, um, Potential burst and the ability to just pop out, take super quick shots, especially when you're in real competitive play, is very favorable. And if you're good with your aim and shots, this can be super effective uh, for late game. So definitely still worth getting, even though it's a higher end one to get uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I still think this is definitely a weapon that's going to shine for a lot of people. Uh, and uh, you know very good with Panther another alternate to put it on would be Guardian a lot of people like that That can be great for smaller TDM maps and 2v2 for sure 
um, just because you can get closer and use his ability. Uh, in terms of other weapons, there's not a lot of other great 16 energy weapons available for either Panther or um, Guardian. So uh, this is usually the typical one unless you're going to be spending money on like disc launchers or the EM rifles. So uh, that's typically what people do for this setup. Maverick is going to be the pilot of choice. And when we think of the implants for this, you definitely want to get the Railgun Reload, the legendary one that is in the shop. Because the reload is so slow on the Railgun, if you do singleton shot, this is super helpful then you want to get your best damage one and then either a duration or a cooldown for your ability is what is really good for panther all right next up we got the beefy aries you want to have a tank in your group and this is a great one to have for sure i have it with the dual disc launcher 12s and rosa all right this is where i like to have my disc launchers mainly because of the mixture of survivability and the aggression you can do because you got your front shield okay the only thing that i would say this is kind of susceptible to is the rocket mortar fire but if you save your sprints and play that smart and use overhead cover you can do decent even against that kind of stuff um, a lot of other stuff it can deal pretty well with and usually after I do my opener of like a kill shot especially as my beacon runner this is a great one to pull out after that um, definitely one of the ones that I like going to for my disc launcher setup you can of course use other 12 energy mechs another great one could be like juggernaut if you want that kind of beefy body I just think that Ares does a little bit better covering ground and regular like straight brawling straight fire um, I also think you know uh, with this kind of setup you can handle groups of enemies quite well the disc launcher of course is great um, at handling all that kind of stuff you do want to be smart about your encounters though you definitely don't want to just think you're Iron Man you can run everywhere otherwise you'll get shredded pretty quickly so you want to try to definitely use that banking off walls and everything that the disc launcher is so great at um, but I definitely find that this is uh, a loadout that carries me through the bulk of a lot of matches typically once I hold a certain area um, this can play defensive or it can push when it needs to very flexible build in a lot of situations Rosa is the one of choice to go with based on our disc launcher setup that we can do and then the implants, we're definitely going to want that legendary reload and the epic radius implant. All right. The epic radius implant is probably the most important, but the reload is also very strong given how quickly you're going to reload this weapon. Then we can just keep going with disc launchers and put on our best damage one. And that is generally the best loadout that I think works here for Ares and the disc launcher setup. Next up, we got the new one here, Surge. After the changes to this guy, he is awesome. And we got the dual arc 10s and G-Lock on this guy. Now, this one is one where, like, if you're doing CPC, he can definitely play, take the place of kill shot as your beacon runner. But this guy, I think, is so flexible and does so much more. Before this, I usually would put Zephyr in here for specialized uses. But because of all the different benefits that Surge now brings, he's one that, you know, just has a lot more potential for being your early guy, for being your late game speed if you need to cap points for being the assassin if you need to get after targets especially with his stealth he's just a really good mech a lot of flexibility a lot of capability um, and great control of your opponents um, obviously the arc turrets is a common choice to go here and since we don't have the 12s the 10s are still very effective and a great choice to go with now of course zephyr is a great one to put in the spot especially if you're trying to save for surge because he's so expensive and if you're someone that actually gets lucky and gets the legendary range boost boost implant for Zephyr, you may want to even go with that one because that is really good, very formidable, super good implant. So um, that may be something you put here instead. But we're going to go with Surge for most general use and uh, G-Lock is going to be the guy on him. We're going to have the legendary range implant. You could probably get away with just the rare one. That one's really good. The epic mag implant, which is pretty solid. And then the damage one. Again, just picking the best one that you can with your stuff here. And last but not least, we got Guardian with the dual Rocket Mortar 12s and Fey set up here. Now, I know that Guardian is probably not the common choice just because he doesn't max out at 24, but I tried to make it a little easier for people, um, you know, so they don't have to fully max him out so you can get this build out sooner. I think this is a really, you know, important build for a lot of people to help kind of level out the playing field against some really tougher opponents when you're doing real competitive play. I also think that Guardian is a good one to think in terms of other long-term stuff. You know, if you're trying to go for, you know, having some flexibility to use your uh, rail guns on this instead of Panther sometimes, or you plan on getting the Disc Ultra 16s or the EM Rifle 16s when you can, he's a good one to kind of have prepared for that for later on. 
But in terms of other options, you could of course do Juggernaut. He's a great one for um, just taking a lot of punishment, especially with counter rocket mortar fire. He could do really well with his shield or Brick House. Brick House kind of feels like the pseudo stalker with his boosted damage. However, his body is really big and he's slow so he can get eaten up by counter rocket mortar fire. Um, Guardian is just a nice middle ground for me and one that I think is forward thinking for the rest of your hangar later. All right, we did say Faye is gonna be with him. And then when it comes to the implants, you gotta have that radius implant. There should be one that is legendary and that's certainly one you wanna put on. Then your best damage one is gonna be good. I also put the range one on here. The range one is decent. It adds a little bit of added bonus of shooting stuff slightly closer to you, but it's not required. So this last slot, you can probably put in other stuff if you'd like. And that is it for the free-to-play competitive hangar. Now, some of this may feel controversial to you. You may want to change certain things, but this was generally for like CPC play or like just generalized play. Of course, when you get into certain kind of maps, certain matchups, you're going to want to change things out. But I do think that this is generally what would, you know, show up in a lot of hangars and just have certain things you shuffle around. But you guys can comment below other things that you like to do instead or things you would change. Always love to hear your comments for that. You'll also see that my hangar right now is at right about 6K just below. Uh, I don't have everything on it maxed out here, but if I did, it would be just above 6K. So that basically means that you kind of max out just around 6K in this competitive free-to-play hangar based on these limitations. That's a big step down from what the paying player, the big whales are doing because they're now over 7K. So if you get into those end game competitive games with those guys, you're gonna struggle. It's gonna be very difficult. No bones about that, all right? Doesn't mean you can't play and it doesn't mean you can't win with your skill, but there's gonna be a lot more of a gap there and any mistake you make will seem bigger because you don't have that extra health or that legendary pilot or you know the extra damage or something like that so i uh, just want to make you all aware of that this doesn't mean that you're going to be able to crush everybody with this hanger but it's probably the most realistic end game hanger we can do right now if you're free to play so that's all i had to say about this one guys like i said feel free to leave your comments below as always and we will see you out there on the battlefield